Hello everyone, my name is Dee and welcome to Books and Quirks. Today I thought I would start a series where I talk about all of the little known classics that I own. Sorry, that was my phone. <laughs> all of the little known classics that I own. Um, I have an entire bookshelf in my other room that is entirely filled with classics. Some are very well known, you know, everyone knows Austin and Bronte and, you know, Thomas Hardy with Tess of the Jubervilles and like, you know, those are the, the well known ones that a lot of people have read, at le you know, at least as required reading usually in high school or college. But I also, because I studied English literature, I also have a lot of classics that I haven't heard anybody talk about. And whenever I talk about these books in you know, even in my real life with friends and family, nobody's ever heard of these books. And I just find that so sad because I enjoy them so much and I would love, you know, to talk about them with people. So I thought, you know, I'd start by pulling some books off that shelf, maybe each week or every other week and starting this series. So yeah, so I, I just, I'm going to start, I just pulled off the first three books off of that bookshelf to start off with and two were actually the first two that I pulled off from the front of the shelf was just uh, two African-American classics and one is um, from the uh, and a lot of these are from like the 18th century so the 1700s and early 1800s and one is w one of the first female writers that published a book so it's really exciting so yeah let me get started oh and if you see me looking down I do have some notes that I just put together just of some bullet points so I don't forget to really um, to tell you about you know the major parts of this book that I really enjoyed this will be non spoilery so if you ever want to pick these up you can feel free to and yeah so let me get started so the first book that I have is The Coquette by Hannah W. Foster. This book was originally published in 1797. It was, she is among the first of the female, um, she was among the first of females to get their books published. And this was actually a bestseller, a best-selling book in her day. This has a little forward, which, you know, explains to you the time period and you know, the, um, you know, the ins and outs of getting this book published. But yeah, so this is, this is one of my favorite books. So this is actually the story of Elizabeth Whitman. And she is a young lady. She's being courted by two men. And she's actually, you know, enters into sort of an illicit relationship, um, and the story kind of goes from there. This book, what makes it so interesting, it's actually based on truth. There was a story in the papers at that time of a young woman, Elizabeth, um, the same name, Elizabeth Wharton. Um, it says it on the back as well. And this woman, you know, was sort of destitute at the end of her life. And because at that time in the 1700s, as we all know, you know, from history, you know, certain things were expected of a young woman. You were expected to get married young, you know, have, have a family, take care of the family, take care of the house, you know, all of those things. Women didn't have a lot of rights, couldn't own property and things like that. So, you know, when somebody enters into an illicit relationship, you know, things can happen and you're sort of um, on the fringes of society. So I really enjoyed this book because I really thought it gave you a glimpse into society at that time. Um, it gave you a glimpse into, you know, the problems that women had if they didn't, you know, conform to what was expected of women at that time. And the character, Eliza War Wharton, um, was ahead of her time because she didn't want to live. She didn't want to conform. She didn't want to live the life that was expected of her. She didn't really want to, you know, do the whole thing of, you know, get married to, you know, somebody that she hardly knows, have a family, take care of the house, the kids. She didn't want to do that. So, 
I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. I've read it a couple times. It's been some time since I've read this um, now, which is why I wrote down some bullet points just to remind myself. But it's a really good read if you ever want to read something from that time period, you know, other than like Austin or something. You know, this one is good. And it's a really easy read. You know, it's not difficult language at all. And all of these books are fairly short. You know, this is only about 160 pages. So it's really a good, a good story in my opinion. The next book that I have is Eola Leroy or Shadows Uplifted by Frances E.W. Harper. This book was published in 1892 and it was among the first novels published by an African-American writer. And this is also one of my favorite books along with The Coquette. Every book that I own, I kept because they're my favorites. I really didn't keep ones that I didn't enjoy. So you'll probably hear me saying a lot during these uh, types of videos like, oh, I, you know, I love this book. But it's absolutely true. That's not a lie. I absolutely love these books. I've read them multiple times in my life. So this is a book primarily about African-American society in the 1800s. Um, you know, it starts off with, you know, slavery and, you know, and the it really delves, it really gives you the glimpse into the viewpoint of the African-Americans during that time, which was really eye-opening, I think, because, you know, a lot of the books or a lot of the history that you learn in at least, you know, during school days is you're, you're kind of removed from it. And although you read some books that, you know, that deal with slavery, you don't really get a good glimpse. And I thought that this was really good. And I've recommended it to so many people over the course of my life since I've read it, because I think it's so powerful and I really enjoyed it so much. For me, this was a really easy read. It's it's not very long. It's a little over 200 pages. But as you can see, this is a little tiny short edition that I have. So it's not very difficult at all. You know, it flowed nicely. The only difficult thing that I think that people might find hard to get used to, at least in the beginning of the book, is the dialect um, during conversation. Um, the dialogue is... A, is it does take a little bit to get used to, but once you get over the first, you know, few pages of the book, I think it flows really easily. I also also should say that the book doesn't gloss over the harsh topics and the conditions that African Americans had to deal with in the South. Um, and but even with these tough topics, I thought the author was really able able to manipulate it into an easy to read book and it gives you a great glimpse into that world. The last book that I want to mention um, that I pulled off my shelf and it was right next to Eola Leroy was the classic slave narratives. This is a really beaten up copy that I have. <laughs> um, but this was right next to it so I thought it went along with Eola Leroy so I might as well talk about it. But this has four narratives from ex-slaves. It was written in the late 19th century. The life of, now I ne can never pronounce this name, so please forgive me if I say this wrong. The life of Aloda Equiano, the life of Mary Prince, the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, and incidents in the life of the slave girl. So I read this book um, quite a few years ago. And it really is, it gives an even greater glimpse, I think, than the Eola Leroy, because these were people that actually lived in that time and spoke about their own lives and their own experiences. And, you know, even, you know, a couple of them being able to escape from slavery. So I think it was a really good read. Um, if you ever get a chance to pick one of these up, you don't have to buy the bind up like I did, um, you can buy them individually. Individually, they're very short. They're only a couple hundred pages, I think. The life of Frederick Douglass is, I think, a little bit longer. Yeah, so I definitely, um, 
thought this one was quite powerful as well. And, you know, I'm sure you can imagine kind of the tough topics that are dealt with in this as well. So there you go. Those are the first three books that I pulled off of my classics bookshelf. I'm going to do this every other week. I don't know if anybody will find this interesting or enjoyable. Um, if you do, please let me know. You know, I have so many books. I also have books written by popular authors, but lesser known works of them, like Thomas Hardy, for example, and others, George Eliot. So I, yeah, I, I thought that this would be some, something nice. Also for me, like I said, you know, I don't have anybody to talk to about books in my personal life. And especially these classics, you know, as far as I know, in my life, I'm the only one that read these. So if you've read them, I would love to talk to you about it. So that is all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that, you know, I can continue to do these throughout 2017. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all very soon.